Hi, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. Thank you for joining us um, today on our uh, weekly Tuesday webinar. Uh, excited to introduce our first um, webinar with actually two hosts. Um, and um, without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to our host, um, Dr. Kathy Oropalo. Hi, everybody. We're so glad you could be here today. We're, uh, we're getting ready to share with you some information about a process called stop lighting. I'm Dr. Kathy Orpalo. I'm a leader coach with Studer Education, and I'm here with my colleague and partner, Joanne Sternke, um, who is a Baldridge Award-winning superintendent and from Pewaukee School District. Welcome, Joanne. Kathy, it's great to be doing this with you. I'm excited to talk about spot, stop lighting because it's a process I know works. Yes. So there's four points we're gonna to try to make today as we talk about stop lighting. One, why stop lighting? Why use it? Two, what is stop lighting? How can you use stop lighting in your organization? And then finally, why does stop lighting matter now more than ever? And so we're gonna share some, some key things with you about that. So if we look at this image today, and as I look at it, I think of a couple things. One, I see people trying to make the best of a difficult situation that we're all too familiar with. People going in different directions. Uh, it, it looks like chaos. And the second thing I think about is that people are still trying to align themselves to a structure that they know the rules of the road. So when you think about what a stoplight does, it kind of brings order to chaos. And without it, we'd have scenarios like this all the time. So one of the things we know is stoplights are a well understood system that helps us know when to stop, pause and go again. And what we'd like to do is borrow from that structure as we think about how, how we uh, monitor progress and work with our improvement. Stop lighting is a tool that allows us to create a structure to cascade communication. It allows us to monitor progress on our key goals in a very routine discipline cadence. So we meet regularly to pause. It allows us to have increased connections to our direct reports. So there's some relationship building there. And some, it promotes individual accountability when we're executing a plan. If you look at this simple example of a stoplight, you're going to see some familiar things that we see with strategic planning or leader action plans. You'll notice there's a goal and an action and a who who's helping out and a when. And typically when we see this traditionally, we have a place to check whether or not we've accomplished that action. But a stoplight allows us to use the system of yellow or green, yellow, and red to look at the degree by which we're working towards an action and a goal. Joanne, you wanna add a few things here about your experience with stoplighting? Yeah. When I think about the tool of what a spotlight, a stoplight report does, I think about complex work. Many of us keep do lists. For example, I have one in front of me and I have all my appointments for the day and I take great pleasure in crossing off once it's completed. But when we're executing a strategic plan, it's more complex work. It's not a simple, yes, I did it or no, I didn't. Sometimes it's in progress and we'd wanna mark it yellow. Sometimes we just wanna feel that it's green, we did it, we accomplished it. And sometimes for all the right reasons, and sadly, sometimes all the wrong reasons, things are red, we didn't get to it, or we made a different decision. When you're doing complex work, like executing a plan, it's important so that we think about it simply with green, yellow, and red, and marking our accomplishments and marking our next steps yellow. Thanks, Joanne. I think you're right. It's all about that execution and the degree in real time of what we're doing. Right. The second thing that we can talk about is how stop lighting is a way to, to help us with a process. So it's a way to know what we're doing well and what we've accomplished. It allows us to harvest our wins and validate things that are going well. It also helps us align our metrics as we collect evidence of our progress. It helps us identify and communicate barriers that, that often show up. And then it helps us guide and focus us on our next actions. So today, as you're thinking about a process and a structure behind your planning and your progress monitoring, we have a poll question for you. The question reads, do you use a stoplight report or a similar tool to structure your planning and progress monitoring? And if you go to Slido to the, to the poll section, 
We'll pause for a minute and let you answer that question. The responses are coming in and right now 75% of our people responding say that they do use a stoplight report and about 20%, about a fifth of our people are saying they don't. So right now we've got more people saying they use one, which is great, yes. but we still have about a quarter of the people on the call that don't know much about it and don't know about the process. So we're going to share you a little bit about the process of using it. So the first thing is thinking about regular scheduled checkpoints. The concept of routine discipline cadence really means that we're deliberately and regularly scheduling pauses for monitoring progress. And there's no right or wrong on the cadence, but most people typically look at things in 30, 45, 60, or 90 day intervals or cycles. If you're trying to build a routine, you're new to stop lighting, sometimes it helps to start at a 30 day period to build that routine and to practice without as much pressure on the accountability side. But if you're, you're in a regular schedule of, in cycles of improvement, you may wanna look at 45 days, 60 days, or 90 days. So here's what I think. When I was a superintendent, I would stoplight our strategic plan. And we wouldn't just do it independently. We'd come to the table and everyone who was a process owner would have brought their action plans all colored in, green, yellow, and red quarterly to show the progress they're making. While I could have done it independently, what I loved about turning the tool into a process was that it increased our accountability. We knew if we had to bring it to the table, we would make sure that we got the work done. But also, there was something really wonderful about how graphic it was. It felt good to turn things green and have a conversation about how we got the work accomplished. And it was even more important for me as the leader to have a conversation with people when things were yellow or red. And so the power of it isn't just in the tool. The power is in exactly what you have here, Kathy. The checkpoint where we really build a process around using that stoplight report and asking key questions about why we got work done and why potentially we didn't. Here's an example of our cycle of improvement. And the tool becomes a way of accelerating that process by, by the way that we talk about improvement. So if you notice, as this is a typical cycle of improvement, as you look and you get to the place where we're monitoring and validating, one of the things that the tool allows us to do is to see, are we on track? Uh, what are the barriers that are getting in the way? What kind of adjustments do we have to make? Do we have to adapt anything? That allows us to begin to look honestly and transparently at our process, and it allows us to begin to accelerate and guide our next set of actions. We're either going to adopt what we started with because it's going really well, and we're going to celebrate that, or we're going to adapt or we're going to abandon something that's not working well for us at all. It becomes more than a piece of paper. So some of you may be having some questions about what does a stoplight report look like? Well, we thought we'd show you a couple samples. This first thing is a, is a stoplight report for rounding. Those of you that know us know that we encourage you to round with your employees which means one-on-one, -on -one, you as the leader, take time to ask some simple questions of employees in a conversation. It's a great opportunity for you to make connections, harvest wins, and really engage people in the work that you do. Two of the questions that you ask when rounding are keen for you to stoplight report. One is, is there anything we can do better? And another question that you may ask in rounding is, do you have the resources to do your job? Now, I don't know about you, but when I round multiple times in a week, I have to keep a list of what people are offering me as ideas. And I want to take those ideas. For example, if people are telling me, Joanne, right now I could use a second monitor when I'm working from home. I might be able to put that on my stop stoplight report and turn it green if I'm able to do it. Or I turn it yellow if I say, you know, I'm gonna help you get to IT with that request. Or I might say, you know, right now, we aren't able to deploy that because we're really trying to focus all of our technology for students. And if that's the case, I'd mark it red. But the idea is 
I then might share the report with people so that they see the progress we're able to make and when I'm able to grant those wishes that people have and needs or when I'm able to say we have to go through a longer process. It keeps track of the progress and it reports out what we're able to do. So stoplight reports and rounding are really effective as a communication tool and to keep track of requests. But some of you know that we also make a stoplight report when we are simply looking at actions. This is a sample plan and we would stoplight maybe quarterly the actions that we're taking. You'll notice that there is a green action, meaning that in that quarter, this organization did develop a communication loop in order to share with others the products and services we provide. But you'll notice that the one above it didn't get accomplished. If I were doing this in a meeting, I might ask some questions about why that occurs. But you'll notice, and this is not rare, that much of the stoplight report is yellow because the work is in progress. When that's the case, I might say it's important to make some of those quarterly actions a little bit more specific so that we are able to accomplish them in whatever cadence we've set up so that it, the stoplight report doesn't look all yellow and daunting. But as a leader, when I look at that stoplight report, I'd want to ask questions of whoever owns it, just to make sure that we can really think about when we see that much yellow, what's next? What am I carrying over to next quarter to do? Some of you may be asking right now, well, Joanne, this is fine when I'm able to do this face to face, but we're working virtually now. Can I do a stoplight virtually? And the answer is yes. Here, one of our coaches, Nanette Johnston, is working with one of her partners to close out a scorecard for the year. And she used a stoplight approach and the partner turned things green if the work was accomplished, yellow if it was still in progress, and red if it didn't get done. I just want to encourage you, as we look to the end of the year, it's a wonderful thing to do to stoplight what work got done. It's a great chance to celebrate. And it's a great chance to look at what work needs to carry over into the summer and the following year. Stoplights are really effective as a way to really monitor that progress during and at the end of a school year. Don't let, it, don't let yourself think that virtually doesn't give you the opportunity. It's as powerful then as it is face to face. So what can the conversation look like when you're working on, when you're huddling around your stoplight and your stoplight process. Here are some key questions that we ask that are helpful. One of the things we can, the first one is the most important. Did we do what we said we were going to do? You know, did we follow through? But then we might see what's going well because we want to harvest wins or who's helping us get it done. Looking at people that are doing it or who can help us get it done ways to improve and identify challenges and barriers so how can we what can we improve and finally what can what do we need to adopt adapt or abandon to set the next key actions i really like those questions kathy i think they really make for a profound conversation that keeps us moving so we have another poll that we're going to pause for and, and this one, we want you to think about how often does your team come together to monitor the progress of your actions? We talked about a cadence and a disciplined cadence. Let's hear from you. You know, it's really interesting, Kathy. Some people, the vast majority, close to 50% are saying they monitor in 30 day increments. But about a quarter of the people who are participating say they do so quarterly in 90 day increments. And then we've got some at 45 days, some we don't know yet, and some at 60 days. But about half the people are monitoring their stoplight report in 30 day increments. And what that tells me is there's no right answer, but what it really tells me that's wonderful is that people are monitoring it and are using it as a tool to monitor progress. It's just meant to make sure that we give a graphic nature to the conversation that we're going to have regarding progress. And I would agree with you, Joanne. I think the other thing that a 30 day sometimes does, it allows us to practice and get into a routine. Yes. And so we have those practice conversations. And then when we get to the end of a quarter, when we really need to look at the evidence to say, okay, where are we? 
people are more comfortable and there's more of the transparency of having that open conversation. So I think that's really powerful. Me too. So today I'm gonna to tell you a little bit of personal story as part of this. This is a family member of mine, Nicole, and she's a managing director of nurses on an acute cardiac floor that has now been turned into an ICU for COVID. And what I want you to do for a minute is just to pause and look at this leader of nurses. What is she telling her people just in this image? My first reaction is that she's saying, we've got this, right? You can tell that. And the other thing is that leaders go first. So when they had their first patient on the floor that was COVID positive, what they did, what she did was she, she went in the room and she herself took the first test to let her, let her nurses know that it was gonna be all right. And I think that one of the things that when we have a structure around improvement, like a stoplight, is it allows us to help people have a ritual that comforts people and reduces anxiety. So they know what to expect. They know how to have those conversations. And more importantly, it, it shows what right looks like when leaders lead first with something like a stoplighting structure. So Joanne's gonna to talk to you a little bit about three buckets uh, to think about as we are trying to, many of you out there are trying to respond to this new unprecedented situation we find ourselves in. And part of the process is knowing what to narrow and focus on and how to use the stoplight process as part of that narrowing and focus as we work on our response plans to this crisis. You know, about a month ago, some of the people that I worked with said, Joanne, I don't know if we're ever gonna make progress again on our scorecards or our plans. It feels like all we're doing is reacting, reacting, reacting. And now I think that our partners are saying, you know, we're at a point where we might be measuring different things, but we can measure progress. And I see the things that are being measured in three big buckets. And boy, do I encourage you to think about how can you measure progress in terms of how you've met students or your participants' basic needs? How many meals have you delivered? How many packets have you created for kids to be learning from? How many reach outs have you had? These are ways that I think we can measure. They may not have been what's on our plan from the beginning of the year, but they're important things to measure now. But one of the things that I think is so important now is to measure student learning. What do we know about how kids are engaged? What do we know about who's engaged and more importantly, who haven't we heard from? Those are things that are important to be measuring now too in stoplighting. You turn green, how many kids are engaging? And then yellow, those that maybe were but aren't now, and red, those students we haven't heard from. Quantifying that is job one right now. But another thing that's so important to do as resources become more important for us to quantify is really look at those operational efficiencies. And when I think of operations, I think of three things. How are you, we using people, money, and time more effectively? People, money, and time. And document and stoplight those things that you're doing in that way as well. These are all things that we can stoplight right now. Where do we have opportunities to do things better? And where are we doing a great job that we'd be marking green right now? I think that's a great piece of, uh, of advice, Joanne. And as I think about you know, the phases we're in where we're responding and implementing some of these response plans, part of it is learning and celebrating what we did right um, and thinking about what we can learn so that if this tends to cycle back in the fall, we know what to do. So that's really great. So the next piece that we have here is, is in the, on the ideas section in your app, Slido app, we wanna ask you to share with each other some key priorities that you're working on that you think a stoplight report might be a good structure for. So what are some things that you're working on that a stoplight can help structure uh, your support and monitor your progress? And feel free to add things you're working on, whether it's in response to what's going on now or whether these are long-term goals and plans that you, you've been working on since the start of the school year. And we're gonna pause, listen, and share out a few of those. 
Wow, I just want to tell you, it's really heartening when I see the great work that's going on. People are writing down that they have weekly check-ins with students so that we know how well we're teaching virtually. And you can stop like that in terms of who you've conversed with and what you know. They talk about stoplighting a strategic plan progress or rounding like we talked about. How about this one? Stoplighting budgets and expenses so that we know where we've spent those resources and why. Sometimes we stoplight a timeline just to make sure that we're making progress on the development or the execution of something. Some people are saying just about when we stoplight, daily huddles, weekly meetings, monthly meetings. It's really great to see the variety of ideas. And I think people may want to check back here and find even more ideas than what I was able to share with you today. Yeah, I know the app will be available to them a little bit longer than this half hour session. So feel free to mine it for good ideas There's, for sure. They're there. All right. So we're at that place where we are at the Q&A and we would love to hear your questions um, and have a chance to respond to you. How much time should we take? on what is green versus red versus yellow? That's a really tough question to answer, but I do believe that you can do it in around a half an hour to 40 minutes if you really spend time in partners where people may not be talking one-on-one -on -one with you if you do it in a group setting, but are talking with each other about why they made progress or why they didn't make progress. I can review it and ask my key questions later. So I think it's a matter of how you structure time. Is it all going through you as the leader or are people sharing in small groups? That really tends to make the time a little bit more efficient. And for me, the idea was that they came to the meeting with its stoplight and, and have done the reflection on their own. The sharing to me is really a time for their colleagues to, or myself to ask questions about why. Another question. So the second question is, is about wondering what stoplighting reporting looks like virtually. And so some of the ideas that I, in the ways that I've seen it used is some people have a form ahead of time that they fill out and they can share their screen with each other on one of our sharing our virtual applications. Um, that's a really great way to do that. Um, sometimes people can report out um, some of these apps have breakout sessions where people can go off and share their stoplight reports and then come back in and have a group discussion. So those are a couple of ways I've seen them used already um, as part of this process. Joanne, it looks like there's a... I have a, que I have a question that says, how many stoplights are you monitoring at one time? So I'm only going to give you my personal experience about how I used uh, stoplight reports to monitor a strategic plan. And for me, I had five big pillars in our strategic plan and a process owner for each one of those pillars. So they each had a stoplight report. And then that, then that cascaded into the schools. And so each principal had a supporting plan. And so those would get stoplighted quarterly in the Pewaukee School District. So we had roughly, I would say, 20 different stoplights that we were monitoring quarterly as we looked at a plan. Now, I want to tell you, there's no right answer to this question. That has a lot to do with the size of our organization, the size of the plan, and how many process owners we had that had a part of it. But for me, I just want to make sure that whoever owns execution of that plan has a stoplight report so that they're able to come to the table with me and with their teammates and be able to talk about what work they've got accomplished, green, what's still in progress and what they're going to do about it, yellow, and what's red and why is it red and what are we going to do about that in the next quarter? So no right answer there. Size of the organization, size of plan really, I think, makes a difference there. We had a couple questions about a stoplight report example. We'll be, when we send you our follow-up, we'll send you a, a sample of that, as well as a copy of the PowerPoint presentation. So just wanted to answer that really quickly. Joanne, you've got a, a question from Urbandale about stoplight reporting for individual professional development plans, if you want to take that one. 
Oh, I love that idea of stoplighting professional development plans, because that to me is important as we think about, again, progress. One of the things that frustrated me so much as a leader is we would make a great effort one year to take a look at, let's say, Reader's Writer's Workshop and get a cadre of people well-trained. But then we weren't as good at stoplighting in year two, in year three, in year four. And so the perpetuity of stoplighting stop lighting in those situations with professional development plans is important. If that's training that we want every teacher to have, we want to make sure that we're stop, stoplighting what we've done as a commitment to people. I really think what's important also is for people individually. If you have to put in, let's say, 30 hours in a year, that's a great opportunity for a stoplight report. Green. What did we get accomplished and what did we learn? Yellow, what are we in progress with? And red, why didn't we get some things done that we may have had on our PD plan for the year as individuals? It just sparks a great level of accountability as well as a conversation about what are we going to move forward and do? I really like the question about how do you handle the reds? Um, and I, you know, I think part of this process is that we're trying to create improvement. And so when, when we look at REDS, we, we flip that and we turn that around to say, what are the barriers? What are the things that are getting in the way? And so I think that is a really important part of this process. As you begin to, a RED doesn't mean it's a bad thing necessarily. It means that we're encountering barriers, some type of, some type of challenge that's getting in the way of us moving forward. And what better place to have that discussion in the room full of people that can relate to, to, to the same situation that, that you're in and troubleshoot with you and think about ways to tackle that barrier. Um, sometimes it goes into a more complex thing where you might do a little root cause analysis if it's a big enough part of the overall improvement process and the, and the goals that you set. But I think it's okay to have reds because it means that, that you're, you're aware that, that something's not working. Um, and why. You begin to explore why. And that to me, someone asked, what does 90 seconds on stuck mean? And to me, and I'm not sure which one of us said that, it probably was me. I use such colloquial language. But we asked people when things are red, what's making you stuck that's turning that red? And we have a conversation of at least 90 seconds, if not more, about why are we stuck? Why are we stuck and what can we do about it? That to me is really what we do. We don't just celebrate the greens. We have that conversation about why we're stuck and who can help us get through it. That final question is a tough question to answer um, because a lot of times different people have different things about how often do we round with each leader. We often say a minimum of two times a year with the leaders, but many, in many cases, depending on the size of your system, and depending on what you're trying to accomplish, that happens much more than that. So think about what, what would be appropriate for you. The whole point of the rounding and the stoplighting of the rounding is to build relationships. It's to get to know, uh, get, get feedback and create a feedback loop on what's happening. We, we just really wanna thank you today for your questions and for your engagement in this process. Joanne, you wanna, we're, we're gonna, we're going to move past here um, and uh, I think we have a closing slide but really what we want to yes. say as Mandy brings it up is it's been great to be with you today you'll be getting the resources not only samples but a sample of the webinar as well as some other resources that will be helpful as you think about how to stop light progress and again the biggest message I want to send you is it was okay in the last month to think about stopping and focusing on what you were doing to react. But now we can look forward and really think about how do we mark progress and how do we use green, yellow, red in a stoplight report to really make that visible and clarify what our next steps are. Kathy, it's been great to be with you. You close awesome. it out. Okay, thank you very much. For all of you out there that we know, hello, and, and we want you to know you're doing the work that matters. Uh, you, we talk about unsung heroes lately, and so we just wanna thank you all, and we hope that Stop Lighting gives you a new way or uh, it, we gave you some new ideas on how to use it. 
thanks for being with us and we uh, appreciate you and hope we see you next time. Thanks everybody. You have a great rest of your day.